Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Fuckor here, of course. And today we are going to take a look at a battle in the old Charles Martel. Of course, uh, this is the Tier 8 um, French cruiser. Now, before we do jump into that battle, though, I did want to just quickly touch on uh, modules and captain abilities for uh, the French cruisers. Um, just to show you what I've got on mine. Now, you might notice as well my poor... Uh, credits up here it's because I just purchased the St. Louis I just purchased that uh, earlier uh, today before I made the video anyway anyway so modules uh, my upgrades what I have going on on the old Charles Motel is I do have my main armament modification one I take this because I do want a reduction to uh, my main batteries becoming incapacitated uh, as well if they do become incapacitated I want them to have a, a reduction to the amount of time that it takes to repair those uh, batteries because obviously I only have three main batteries and that's the main armament of this ship. So I take that over auxiliary armament. I'm not too concerned about the AA power uh, right now. I'm not too concerned about my magazines becoming detonated and uh, damage control modification one. Nah, it's a special upgrade. Um, I've got it. It's there, whatever. Second uh, upgrade is I did go ahead and get the aiming systems modification. Now this one might be a little more subjective as to what you personally would rather. So something to keep in mind with your French cruisers, the French cruisers are very, very accurate. So it's sort of up in the air as to whether or not, um, or I guess it's personal opinion as to whether or not you want um, more accurate guns, or if you're gonna take your main battery modification two, which will increase turret diverse, um, and of course uh, decrease loading time. So that's not too bad, um, but I did want excuse me, um, better accuracy above and beyond what I've got. Um, you know, it does give an increase to secondary battery um, and secondary dispersion is, is decreased as well. Turret traverse is, uh, speed is increased, so that's nice. These are nice, but basically for me, it's all about the dispersion of these main battery shells. However, like I said, um, some of you might find that the main battery modification too is more useful. A little more subjective on this one. I don't go with the AA modification because I'm not too concerned about AA defense on the ship. You can see she's only at 46. I know that I can definitely increase that right obviously to 55 and then maybe even some more with some uh, captain abilities, but I'm not too concerned about it. And obviously I'm not going to take the secondary bat uh, battery modification. Not very important on the old Martel. Number three. So it is going to be a toss up here. Do you want your propulsion or do you want your steering gear? I went with propulsion and I'll tell you why. I find that these French cruisers are incredibly susceptible to having their steering gear and their engine knocked out. Very, very susceptible. If you recall way back when, when they first introduced the German cruisers and the Koningsberg and the Nuremberg basically just had to like spit on them and their engine would go out. It's almost the same thing here. Um, not as bad, clearly, but almost the same thing. So you have a choice. Do you want to always be able to steer or at least you know have a better chance of being able to steer or do you want to have a better chance of having your engines running and I always go for the engines running if I can't steer whatever maybe I can still be in a situation where um, I can still work with it whereas if I have no engine at all that situation doesn't come up right I don't have any propulsion so I can't go anywhere I went with my uh, propulsion modification to mitigate against my engines being knocked out steering gears They'll probably get knocked out um, quite often, but you know, you got to take what you get. Now, number four, um, what do we have here? Yeah, so steering gear modification two increases rudder shift time. I do this on most of my cruisers, if not all of the cruisers, because I want that extra bit of um, reaction time, I guess, when torpedoes are incoming or when something is happening and I just need to turn as quick as I possibly can. I usually always take this over the propulsion modification, uh, and this is because it does decrease your maneuverability because you can see it right here, minus 50% time to reaching full power when accelerating. So what this means is that when you are in a full on turn and you're going full speed, you'll be able to maintain your a higher speed than you would without this modification. How that translates in ships is that your turning circle increases because now you're moving faster and it's going to take you longer to actually make a turn. So I always try to avoid uh, this propulsion modification um, for my cruisers anyway. It's not something that I like. I do generally always go with the steering gear. 
it's much better to have a reduction in your rudder shift time than it is to have an increase in your uh, turning radius. Just makes sense. Last modification to me is a no-brainer. I always go concealment. Always go concealment on basically every ship I've got except a battleship. With battleships, I'm not too concerned, depending on the type of battleship that it is anyway. But generally speaking, I'm not too concerned over how, you know... Um, over whether or not I'm spotted. Cruisers and destroyers, completely different uh, story. You want that. All right, so those are the, the, the upgrades that I put on my French cruiser. And on the St. Louis, it's going to be the same thing. I have get that, uh, you get that extra option here. I think it's this one. We will see. Yeah, right, so I have the this extra one. So I'll make that decision when I get there. Um, but for now, we're going to go over to the commander abilities that I've got on old Andre, Andre Laroche. Um, okay, so we do have priority target. No brainer to me anyway for a cruiser. You gotta have it. Um, because I didn't get the increase in my turret rotation speed, uh, that module, I had to go ahead and get it on my uh, captain abilities, right? So I went ahead, expert marksman, there we go. Demolition expert, no brainer. The French have a great, uh, great AG shells. Um, they're not the strongest in the game by far, uh, but they are still decent. And if you go ahead and get your demolition expert, they will be that much more effective. And then finally, concealment expert. Again, no brainer. Now you can see my captain is a 13 point captain, so he's obviously not completely maxed out. Um, I am going to save up for another fourth level ability. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to take, but these these four are the first four that I will always take um, for basically for a cruiser. Um, I, th I think that these are very critical, and then once I have these four, then I can start playing around uh, with some other abilities. But anyway, like I said, I just wanted to quickly take a look at uh, what I've got for modules and captain abilities on the old Charles Martel, and now we'll go ahead and jump into a um, into some gameplay. All right, so moving into the gameplay here, uh, you can see that our battle will be on North. Now, North is one of those classic maps um, that we've all played on many, many times. So it'll serve, you know, this video will serve as a, a pretty good um, example of what the Martel can do and what she can't do, because um, it'll be a pretty good battle, but you do, there are some definite mistakes here <laughs> that are made by me <laughs> in the ship, and she just she just can't do it. But anyway, anyway, um, first thing, um, obviously, you know, as once the battle loads here, is that uh, we do not want to be the first person spotted, right? And you can say that with any cruiser. Do not want to be the first person spotted. It is just so critical, uh, especially at the beginning, um, of the battle like this because you know the first thing that you are going to spot is most likely uh, going to be maybe an enemy destroyer or an enemy cruiser that got a little too close those battleships will be in the back and you maybe won't spot them right away and so enemy destroyer pops up let's say for example and you take a shot off at the enemy destroyer well now you're spotted and so all you saw was the enemy destroyer but now you're spotted and the enemy team all sees you and they will all target you and they will fire at you and it, it, it's going to result in early damage to your ship which is something that you just don't want to have happen it, it's <laughs> you need every little shred of hit points that you have um, especially in these cruisers now Charles Maltel is no different than any other cruiser in that she has very little armor uh, you cannot expect her to absorb heavy uh, heavy shells from incoming battleships, for example. They will just citadel you and get you gone very, very quickly. Same can be said with any other uh, heavy cruiser, and by heavy cruiser, of course, those are the cruisers that have 8-inch uh, guns. Um, those cruisers can citadel you very, very, very easily with their armor piercing, so you want to be incredibly careful around those people as well, uh, especially if you are sailing broadside. One nice thing, um, well, I mean, there are many nice things about the Martel here, but the first thing that comes to mind is the placement of the turrets. Um, so basically the opposite placement that we would have on uh, a ship like the Rune, for example, where on the Rune you have your primary armament, it's concentrated on the stern of the ship. Here it's concentrated on the bow of the ship. And what that means is that this ship is pretty damn good at charging things if the situation calls for, right? 
obviously you're not going to be charging multiple ships at once. I've tried it, it doesn't work. Um, instead, it, it gives you a nice opportunity of, say for example, charging a destroyer, popping your acoustic sonar, charging a destroyer, hunting that destroyer down in, in their own smoke, and then taking that player down, right? It gives you that opportunity. Um, whereas in uh, you know a ship like the Rune, a little harder to accomplish because you only have the one forward firing, uh, facing turret. So you can see here we do have some enemies off in the distance. Um, we start firing at these enemies and I think that I was one of the first people to actually open fire and you can see instantly the amount of uh, enemy ships that just start targeting you, right? And you really have to maneuver as soon as someone starts targeting you like that and you are sailing broadside because um, you don't want to absorb, <laughs> or rather you can't absorb uh, any of those incoming shells. You will get obliterated so it is something that you do want to be uh, aware of anyway. So we're just kind of sailing around here, taking a look to see what the enemy is doing. And that's another important point here to mention, is you don't want to make um, early mistakes. Um, we already know that World of Warships does not reward you uh, for making mistakes. In fact, quite the opposite, you get punished pretty severely. Same thing can be said with your cruisers, uh, and Charles Martel is no exception from that. Um, you do have to pay attention. Um, if you make a mistake, you will pay for it, uh, mostly with your life. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> so you really do want to pay attention. So you can see that we do have the turrets. I think it's the turrets there off in the distance, and we are firing it on the player, and we are setting fire to the player as well, which is great. This is what uh, Martel and, and your French cruisers really do excel at. Uh, that being said, I don't think there's a whole lot that separates um, a French cruiser from a Russian cruiser, other than obviously the radar. I don't think there's a whole lot that separates the French cruisers from the Japanese cruisers. I mean, you could, other than the concealment. So where I'm, what I'm getting at here is I, I like the French cruisers. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy them. It's because I enjoy cruisers. But I don't think, and I don't find that there's anything really too... Um, distinguishing about these French cruisers that, that just make them so much more different or uh, offer a different sort of gameplay. Now, Wargaming and other people might argue, well, Thakur, you know, you have your uh, boost ability there. And this is true. This is true. The boost is there. It is unique to this line of, uh, of ships. But I don't think it's that big of a game changer, to be honest, because we just talked about not making mistakes. Right, trying not to make early mistakes and um, not firing right away, um, not having good armor and all that stuff, being able to get citadeled from a lot of things. So if you have this boost ability that is going to allow you to get from one end of the map to the other, do you really think people are going to use this boost ability to charge the enemies <laughs> from the other side of the map? Or is it more likely that they're going to use their boost ability to run away faster? And I'm fairly sure, 85% sure, that most people are going to use it to run away faster. And so I think it does take away um, from what Wargaming was trying to do with this unique speed boost thing here. Um, but to the same effect, it can be used in certain situations to great effect. Um, so... I do like it. I'm not gonna, you know, not gonna start bashing the French cruisers and say I'm not gonna play them. I do enjoy them. It's just I just don't find that they're any different than um, any of the other cruisers in game. I, I just find they they all play the same. Um, they're all you know good at what they do, and I enjoy playing them. But they they just all play the same. I mean, the biggest difference, I guess if you're going to call it that, is uh, the radar. There is no radar. The the Russian cruisers have that. And that's what makes the Russian cruisers very, well, that and, you know, good HE values and in the higher tiers, AP values, um, makes the Russian cruisers so unique. And right now in ships, I would argue uh, that the Russian cruisers are the only cruisers that offer a different sort of gameplay. The rest of the cruisers are <laughs> all pretty much the same. <laughs> I know that they have their little quirks and whatnot, but they're, they're all pretty much the same. Set fire to stuff stay at range, try not to get uh, shot at, right? And you should do pretty good. And that's what I'm attempting to accomplish here in this battle. So far, it's going all right. You can see my team has taken C and D, which is actually 
interesting. Um, you don't normally see people taking uh, D on this map, but we have. My team has. We've all shifted to that side. Now, I'm in here a diehard trying to get B, trying to secure it. You can see I'm up against uh, my equal here, the Charles Martel, as well. Uh, this player is firing uh, high explosive at me. I do switch over to my armor piercing, hoping to actually get some, uh, you know, a citadel or nice shot in there. Doesn't work out for me. Um, and uh, I am going to need to switch back over to my high explosive if I want to do any damage. Now, at the same time, I'm getting out of this situation, right? I'm not going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with this cruiser. And it's not because, you know, one-on-one -on -one I can't do it. It's because beyond that little landmass at B, there are more enemies coming in from A. And it's going to take pretty much everything I've got to take on that, that, that Charles Martel if I wanted to. But as soon as an, another enemy ship shows up, it's over. I'm not going to be able to do it. i got to get away. And it's, you know, a lot of it does have to do with the fact that I'm so close to the enemy ships. Uh, the further away you get, the more options open up for you. Um, and that's mm, fairly intuitive um it makes sense wargaming has talked about it before especially with the british battleships right the new british battleships were uh they say you know come in do your damage and uh, take a bit of damage but then get away disengage repair do your healing and then come back in and it, cruiser captains have been doing this since forever right it just well obviously we can't repair until tier 9 and 10 um, but we have been doing the similar thing you know go in little strikes and come out um, hopefully do a bit of damage and take even less damage right generally is what we try to do um, so we do have uh, an enemy ship here off on our uh, port side of the ship. We are going to fire into the player here as well. Again, we're hoping not to be the center of attention. Um, if we look at the minimap, we can see my allies who were in D uh, are now on their way over to B. This is good. This is very, very good. This is what I want. Um, and I'm going to actually circle back around and try and get myself into D. I'm doing this because there is a cyclone incoming. And the cyclone might actually be going on right now. But anyway, yeah, it is. Um, so it's reduced everything to 8 kilometers. And so I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to try and get in here. I'm going to try and cap B. Here's something else <laughs> that Charles Martel can't do. Uh, she's not a brawler not a brawler. She does have torpedoes, uh, and they have a really good firing arc. You can, it's almost 180 degrees on either side of the ship. But there's only three of them, and if it if you're facing off against a battleship that is like six kilometers away from you, those three torpedoes, even if all three hit, are not going to kill it. Um, so it, it's just not a brawler. So you do want to try and avoid close-in confrontations with many different ships. Um, if it's just... And, you know, in a destroyer, yeah, sure, probably go right in there, um, throw on your acoustic sonar and, and charge that destroyer and take him down. But the second another enemy ship shows up, you're going to start having issues. Because, um, again, not a brawler. She just can't do it. Um, doesn't have the armor. It's just not there. Now, when, you know, like I just said, we've got one destroyer in front of us. This is not going to be a problem whatsoever for us. Uh, we will quickly take down the destroyer, you know, easy peasy. Once a player is gone, turn ourselves around, get into the point, start capping it. I really should have kept a better mental image of <laughs> what was in and around B before the cyclone set in. Um, yeah, because it's it's just not going to end up too well here. But anyway, we're pushing into B. You can see you're sitting on about 103,000 damage. We, the majority of this damage is, is done through fire. Um, and you can see with the number of fires that we have that, yeah, that makes sense. I'm um, going to try and do a bit more damage here. Uh, obviously not planning on dying. Um, but we do have some trouble ahead. So we can see the first enemy battleship pop up there. We see an enemy cruiser there as well. I'm, uh, or rather, I thought those were my torpedoes. No, my ally launches off torpedoes. Hopefully they're going to hit that player and take the player down you can see the aoba there in the background concerned about the aoba because if that player decides to fire uh, armor piercing at me i'm going to be screwed especially if i have uh, a broadside would have been a good opportunity to switch over to the armor piercing to the oba there but i, I just didn't have time um was i was more concerned about the island in front of me making a turn to get out of b capping it well capping b making a turn and getting out before the more enemy battleships pop up and I have more issues is what I'm attempting to do. Now we can see shots coming in from the enemy uh, off in the distance there. That is an enemy key. This is uh, a new premium 8 uh, Japanese battleship long overdue tier 8 Japanese battleship. But anyway, anyway, 
We've almost got the point capped, which is great. I'm going to turn myself. I was thinking maybe that the enemy Bismarck, or what's it, a Bismarck? Not sure, but maybe that enemy battleship is gone. Uh, maybe? No. We can see the, the player pops up there as well. So, okay, i got to get out of here. Um, I can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an enemy battleship, let alone a Bismarck, that's just going to pummel me with secondary armament. Cannot do it. We still have the enemy Oba over here, or Aoba. Um, so... Mm, bit of a concern because I am sailing broadside to the player and the player decides to put some armor piercing into me like we see here um, and I'll be dead and there we go now granted I know that that was the I think it was that battleship off in the distance there that did manage to finish me off but still Oba did a bit of damage there as well so I've died but we're going to switch over to the key uh, ally key here and um, talk a little bit about Charles Martel some more so you can see I did manage to get myself a witherer um, I, I can usually pull off a witherer quite easily in a French cruiser or a Russian cruiser as well, just with the amount of fires that I'm able to set. And I have set quite a few fires in this battle, and that's something to really... If, if you're wondering whether or not you want to, uh, to try out the French cruisers, if you like burning things down, yes, definitely do it. But that's not to say that the French cruisers don't also offer good AP damage. They definitely do. Like any cruiser, you have to switch between your ammo types when the situation warrants it. Um, just has to be done. So you do have the option there as well of doing decent AP damage. But it's not something that I, I would necessarily have as a selling feature of the ship itself. For me... The selling feature is the high ability to set fires, because what that translates is, er, for me, what that translates to, sorry, is damage per minute, more damage per minute, and that's what I'm looking for when I'm playing a cruiser. It's all about killing the target as quickly as I possibly can, uh, and that's why I enjoy cruiser play. So that's what I'm looking for. So for me, the French cruisers are great. I like them, but like I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't find that there's anything necessarily unique and I put bunny ears over that that sets them apart I know the high the boost is there right and that's technically unique and sets them apart but I just don't find that there's too much of a difference between a French cruiser and a Russian cruiser there just isn't the French cruiser is more accurate Russian cruiser will have a better chance of setting fire uh, French cruiser has the speed boost Russian cruiser has uh, radar right so it's yeah, give or take, but I would definitely recommend going down the French cruiser line um, if you get a chance. So battle is over, victory is ours. We did end up doing a bit more damage, finished first overall on the team, which is great. Um, and we, you can see some of the damage and how it was spread out. And again, you, very typical for me in my gameplay is spreading out the damage amongst enemy ships. I try not to focus too much on a single ship because I do find that I lose situational awareness in those situations. You might find the same thing for yourselves as well. But anyway, anyway, that is today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of French cruisers. I've heard a bit from a few of you on, on some of your thoughts on the French cruisers, but I'm, I'm curious to hear from more of you. Um, and I'd love to know what your take is on the French cruisers. But anyway, leave those comments and any other comments you have in the video section below. Uh, remember to hit the old like button if you like today's video. Hit subscribe if you are not a subscriber. And as always, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.